Good afternoon, Your Honours. Case number IT 9514-2T, the Prosecutor versus Dario Kordic and Mario Cerkes. Microphone, please, Judge. By the International Tribunal concerning events in the Lashva Valley in 1992 and 1993. However, it is the first involving a high-ranking politician. The background is the conflict between the Bosnian Muslims and Bosnian Croats, which took place during those years in central Bosnia. The accused both played prominent parts in that conflict. Dario Kordic was a politician described as the most important in the area. Mario Cherkis was a military man, commander of a brigade in the Bosnian Croat Armed Forces. The charges against them arise from events during the conflict. The indictment contains 44 counts and charges each accused with eight grave breaches of the Geneva Conventions. 10 violations of the laws or customs of war and 4 crimes against humanity. The first two counts charged the accused with persecution, a crime against humanity. The other counts charge offences relating to murder, inhuman treatment, detention and destruction. The indictment alleges that the accused participated in a widespread or systematic campaign of persecution of the Bosnian Muslims in that region, culminating in a series of attacks over a two-year period on towns and villages in the Lashva Valley and surroundings. Many Muslim civilians were killed, seriously wounded, or detained. Meanwhile, their homes were burned, their towns, villages, and places of worship destroyed, and their property plundered. The defense case for both accused amounts to a complete denial of the prosecution case. Not only is the responsibility of the accused for the crimes alleged against them disputed, there is an issue whether the crimes were committed at all. The trial chamber, therefore, has had to determine whether these crimes were committed, and if so, whether the accused were guilty of those charged against them. The result has been an extremely long trial, lasting 20 months, in which a great deal of evidence was put before the court. In all, 241 witnesses gave evidence, and over 4,500 exhibits were produced. The transcript runs to 28,000 pages. What follows is a written summary, is a summary rather of the written judgment and forms no part of it. That judgment is available today. First, some matters of law. The trial chamber finds that there was a general state of armed conflict in central Bosnia at the relevant time. It also finds that there is a clear connection between this conflict and the alleged crime set out in the indictment. 
the trial chamber finds that due to the intervention of the Republic of Croatia, this conflict was international. The trial chamber also finds that persecution may include conduct not specifically listed as a crime against humanity in Article 5 of the Statute of the International Tribunal. However, such conduct must reach the same level of gravity as the other crimes listed in the article. In this case, the trial chamber finds that two alleged acts do not rise to that level of gravity, namely persecution in the form of encouraging and promoting hatred by propaganda and otherwise, and persecution in employment. Turning now to the facts, the relevant history begins with the founding in 1990 of a Bosnian Croat political party, the Croatian Democratic Union of Bosnia and Herzegovina, or HDZBIH. This was an offshoot of its Croatian parent, the nationalist HDZ party. In late 1991, the HDZBIH set up a separate Croatian community within Bosnia, the HZHB, which the trial chamber finds was established with the intention that it should, in due course, become part of the Republic of Croatia. The HZHB thereafter created another body, the Croatian Defense Council, the HVO, as the executive and defense authority of the Bosnian Croat community. Local municipal HVOs were then set up as the executive and military power in the municipalities. Meanwhile, Dario Kordic rose rapidly in the HDZBIH political party, becoming its, his, its president in his hometown, Busovaca, president of his regional community, and vice president of the HZHB. Mario Cherkis, for his part, was one of the founders of the HVO in Vitez and commander of its local brigade, known as the Viteska Brigade. In 1992, the HVO began taking over all power in the municipalities in, cent in central Bosnia, in particular in Busovaca, Vitez and Kiseljak. They met little armed resistance except in Novi Travnik and the village of Ahmici. In these incidents, Dario Kordic demonstrated both his political and military authority. And the trial chamber finds that by the end of 1992, on the eve of the conflict, Dario Kordic combined both forms of authority his military authority did not involve a formal rank, but was a position which he had won for himself. Accordingly, a, price, a precise position in the chain of command cannot be ascribed to him. It is not suggested that he had power to discipline or punish troops and the tri trial chamber finds that he has no liability under Article 7.3 of the statute concerning command responsibility. We come now to the most important year in the conflict, 1993. That year began with peace talks and the Vanso in peace plan. 
However, the situation soon degenerated into conflict, first in Gorny Vakuf and thereafter in Busavacha. The HVO attacked the latter municipality in January 1993 using artillery and infantry on civilian targets and setting a pattern for subsequent attacks on towns and villages. The evidence shows that Dario Cordich was implicated in this attack. In April 1993, it was the turn of Vitas and the Muslim villages of the Lashva Valley to come under attack. The trial chamber finds that the evidence points to a well-organized and planned HVO attack upon these locations. In particular, the village of Ahmichi, where the attack early in the morning of 16th of April resulted in a massacre in which more than 100 people were murdered, including 32 women and 11 children and the village was destroyed. There were similar attacks on the villages up and down the Lashfa Valley and on the town of Vitez. The trial chamber finds that these attacks followed a common design or plan conceived and executed by the Bosnian Croat leadership to ethnically cleanse the valley of Muslims. Dario Kordic, as the local political leader, was part of this design or plan, his principal role being that of a planner and instigator. In addition, the trial chamber finds that Dario Kordic was present at a meeting of politicians in the headquarters of Colonel Blaskic on the 15th of April, when the attacks on Ahmici and the other villages were authorized. That Mario Cherkes was present at a subsequent military meeting when plans were drawn up. And also that Dario Kordic was associated with an order given by Colonel Blaskic to kill all the military aged men, expel the civilians, and set fire to the houses in Armici. As for Mario Cherkis's role on 16th of April, the trial chamber finds that during this period the Viteska Brigade was in the thick of the fighting and that Mario Cherkis was in command of the brigade. As commander he participated in the attacks on Vitez, Stari Vitez and Vecherisco. However, in spite of his presence at the military meeting on the 15th of April, the trial chamber is not satisfied, beyond reasonable doubt, that Mario Cherkes bears any responsibility for the attack on Armici. This attack was the responsibility of the 4th Battalion Military Police, which was not under his command. The fighting around Vitez continued after the 16th of April. On the 18th of April, a truck bomb exploded near the mosque in Stari Vitez, killing at least six people and injuring 50 others. The trial chamber finds that this was an act of pure terrorism committed by elements within the HVO in Vitez but that there is no evidence to connect either of the accused with this action. On the 18th of April, the HVO attacked the villages in the Kiseliak municipality. These attacks were part of the general offensive launched by the HVO against the Muslims in this area. And Dario Kordic, as the local political leader, was associated with them. On the 19th of April, 
the marketplace in Zenit uh, was shelled, killing 15 people and injuring many others. The trial chamber finds that the HVO was responsible, but that this was not consistent with the pattern of the other attack, attacks and thus falls outside the common design or plan. No political connection has been demonstrated and consequently the trial chamber cannot draw the inference that Dario Cordich was implicated in this unlawful attack. By the end of April there was a ceasefire in place but in June, further fighting broke out in central Bosnia. The HVA launched another series of attacks, this time on villages in the Kiseliak municipality, including the village of Tulitsa, where 12 people were killed and the village destroyed. The trial chamber finds that these offensives were another manifestation of the HVO design to subjugate the Muslims of central Bosnia. As with the offences against the villages in April, the trial chamber finds that the attacks would not have been launched without the approval of the local political leadership in the person of Dario Kordic. In October 1993, events moved to Varis municipality. The village of Stupni Deo is located about a kilometer south of the town of Varish. On the 23rd of October, the village was attacked. 38 people lost their lives. It was not disputed that Avica riot and his troops from Kiseliak were responsible for this massacre. Some defense was offered in the village, but there can be no justification for what happened. However, the trial chamber finds that Dario Cordic's influence and authority, which were concentrated in the Latva Valley, did not extend to Stupni Dau, which was thus outside his sphere of authority, and the attack on the village was not part of any common plan or design to which he was a party. During the HVO offensives, many hundreds of Bosnian Muslim civilians were rounded up and detained in makeshift camps, where conditions varied from camp to camp, but were generally inhuman. The trial chamber finds that the detainees were subject to arbitrary and unlawful imprisonment, which was part of the common design or plan, and that they were forced without justification to dig trenches and were used as hostages and human shields. The trial chamber also finds that as commander of the Viteshka Brigade, Mario Cherkes was responsible for the unlawful imprisonment and inhuman treatment of the detainees in the Vitez detention facilities and that Dario Cordic was responsible for the unlawful imprisonment of detainees in the areas for which he had authority. However, the camps were run by the military and the evidence is not such as to allow an inference to be safely drawn that Dario Cordic was connected with the way in which the detainees were treated or that the treatment was part of the common plan or design. The trial chamber finds that there was a pattern of destruction and plunder in all the places attacked by the HVO and that the HVO deliberately targeted mosques and other religious and educational institutions. All this was part of the common plan and the accused were implicated in the offences where they have been found to be responsible for attacks. In relation to those counts alleging persecution, the trial chamber finds on overwhelming evidence that there was a campaign of persecution 
aimed at the Bosnian Muslims throughout the indictment period in central Bosnia. It took the form of the most extreme expression of persecution. That is, attacking towns and villages with a concomitant destruction and plunder, killing, injury and attention. The purpose of the campaign was the subjugation of the Bosnian Muslim population. Thus, the trial chamber rejects the defence case that these events amounted to a civil war and that the Bosnian Croats were on the defensive and themselves subjected to persecution. For these purposes, the fact that individual atrocities were committed against Bosnian Croats is irrelevant although they may be the subject of other criminal proceedings. The trial chamber makes the following findings about the participation of the accused in the campaign of persecution. Whatever positions he may have held, the evidence does not support the contention that Dario Cordic was in the very highest echelons of the Bosnian Croat leadership or that he conceived the campaign of persecution. He was a regional leader and lent himself enthusiastically to the common design of persecution by planning, preparing and ordering those parts of the campaign which fell within his sphere of authority. As already noted, the trial chamber finds that Mario Cherkis, as the commander of the Viteshka Brigade, participated in the attacks on Vites, Stari Vites and Vecheriska. This was a high point of the campaign of persecution the accused players played his part in that campaign by commanding the troops involved in some of the incidents. As such, he was a co-perpetrator. We turn now to the allegation that the accused are also guilty by reason of their superior responsibility and failure to prevent these crimes and to punish the perpetrators. The trial chamber notes that such responsibility may attach to civilians once it is established that the requisite power to prevent and punish exists. However, as already noted, the trial chamber finds that Dario Cordich did not possess the authority either to prevent the crimes or to punish the perpetrators and cannot therefore, therefore be liable under Article 7.3 of the statute. On the other hand, Mario Cherkes knew of the impending attacks on Vites, Stari Vites and Vecheriska by the troops under his command. He failed to take the necessary measures to prevent those attacks failed to punish those who were responsible and is therefore liable under Article 7.3 in respect of the offences arising from attacks on those three locations. Finally, the trial chamber applies the practice approved by the appeals chamber recently in relation to cumulative convictions. As a result, the accused will be acquitted of those counts for which a cumulative conviction would be inappropriate. The trial chamber's findings on the counts of the indictment are as follows. Counts one and two 
crimes against humanity, persecutions, count one, Dario Cordage guilty. Count two, Mario Cherkes guilty. Counts three to six, violations of the laws or customs of war, unlawful attack on civilians. Counts three and four, Dario Cordage guilty. Counts five and six, Mario Cherkes guilty. Count seven to twenty, crimes against humanity, grave breaches of the Geneva Conventions, and violations of the laws or customs of war, murder, willful killing, inhumane acts, willfully causing great suffering or serious injury in human treatment. Dario Cordage, count 7, 8, 10, and 12, guilty. Counts 9, 11, 13, not guilty. Mario Cherkis, counts 14, 15, 17, and 19, guilty. Counts 16, 18, and 20, not guilty. Counts 21 and 22, a crime against humanity and a grave breach of the Geneva Conventions, imprisonment, unlawful confinement. Dario Cordage, guilty. Counts 23 to 28, grave breaches of the Geneva Conventions and violations of the laws or customs of war, inhuman treatment, Use of human shields, taking of hostages, Dario Cordage not guilty. Counts 29 to 31, a crime against humanity and grave breaches of the Geneva Conventions, imprisonment, unlawful confinement, inhuman treatment, Mario Cech is guilty. Counts 32, to 36, violations of the laws or customs of war and grave breaches of the Geneva Conventions, cruel treatment, taking of hostages, inhuman treatment. Mario Cherkis, counts 32, 34, and 36, not guilty. Counts 33 and 35, guilty. Counts 37 to 42, grave breaches of the Geneva Conventions, violations of the laws or customs of war, extensive destruction of property, wanton destruction, plunder. Count 37, Dario Cordage, not guilty. Counts 38 and 39, Dario Cordage, guilty. Count 40, Mario Cherkes, not guilty. Counts 41 and 42, Mario Cherkes, guilty. Counts 43 and 44, violations of the laws or customs of war, destruction or damage to religious or educational institutions. Counts 43, count 43, Dario Cordage, guilty. Count 44, Mario Cherkes, guilty. Turning now to the question of sentence, the trial chamber makes some general points. The trial chamber will consider the appropriate sentences in the case of the accused emphasizing that the sentences reflect the evidence in this case and the role of these accused as found by this trial chamber. Both accused have been convicted of numerous offenses. 
They all arise from the same common design which led to the persecution and the ethnic cleansing of the Bosnian Muslims of the Lashva Valley and surroundings. The resulting sustained campaign involved a succession of attacks on villages and towns which were characterized by a ruthlessness and savagery and in which no distinction was made as to the age of its victims. Young and old were either murdered or expelled and their houses were burned. The total number of dead may never be known but, into, but it runs into hundreds with thousands expelled. Offences of this level of barbarity could not be more grave and those who participate in them must expect sentences of commensurate severity to mark the outrage of the international community. Dario Cordage, will you stand? Your role in these offences was an important one. As a regional political leader in central Bosnia, with particular authority in the Lashva Valley, you were the effective political commander in the area where the majority of the offences were committed. As already noted, the trial chamber has not accepted the full extent of the prosecution case and has not found that you were in the highest echelons of the leadership of the campaign of persecution. Likewise, you've been acquitted of some of the offences arising from individual acts of terror and the massacre at Stupnido. Therefore, you are not to be sentenced as an architect of the persecution or the prime mover in it. Nevertheless, you joined the campaign enthusiastically and played an instrumental part in the Lashva Valley offences in 1993, in particular in ordering the attack on Armichi and the other villages in April 1993. For your part in that dreadful episode, you deserve appropriate punishment. The fact that you were a politician and took no part in the actual execution of the crimes makes no difference. You played your part as surely as the men who fired the guns. Indeed, the fact that you were a leader aggravates the offences. You have offered no mitigation, and there is none. The trial chamber considers that your overall criminality can best be reflected in a single sentence. Dario Cordich, you were sentenced to 25 years imprisonment. You may sit down. Mario Cherkis, will you stand? Your position is different to that of your co-accused. You were a soldier and a middle-ranking HVO commander. The trial chamber notes that you have no previous experience of command and that nothing in your earlier life could have prepared you for it. However, you were commander of the Viteska Brigade during the time of the terrible events in the Lashva Valley and led it in the assaults which resulted in civilian death and destruction. While the trial chambers found that your troops were not involved in the massacre at Armichi, you played your part in the campaign of persecution, aggravated because of your role as a commander. While there was positive testimony as to your character and personality, none of the matters submitted as mitigating circumstances amount to mitigation of these international crimes. The trial chamber considers that your overall com criminality can best be reflected in a single sentence. Mario Cherkes, you are sentenced to 15 years imprisonment. You may sit down.
The period of time which the accused have spent in custody of the International Tribunal, that is the period from the 6th of October 1997 to the date of this judgment, shall be deducted from the sentences. The court will rise. All rise. Fear for the 